let us understand the concept of free torsional vibration of three rotor system there are two cases in first case when first rotor and third rotor rotate in same direction and middle rotor rotate in opposite direction then it is known as two rot two node frequency and in second case when the first two rotors rotate in the same direction and the third rotor rotate in opposite direction then it is known as one node frequency now we will move to the first case two node frequency now this is the equivalent three rotor system we will give here the name as three rotors for as first rotor is a second rotor is b third rotor is c now according to this two node frequency first rotor and third rotor rotate in the same direction so we will show here the direction of the rotation while the middle rotor rotate in opposite direction so we will show here this is the direction of rotation now this is the equivalent system and the diameter of shaft is d now the distance in between rotor a and b as a l1 and distance in between rotor b and c as a l2 now we will convert this in this system into equivalent spring mass system so we know that this shaft will work as a spring with stiffness kt and these rotors will work as a mass so the mass of rotor a is ma mass of rotor b is mb and mass of rotor c is mc now how to convert it now if we observe this equivalent system rotor a and b rotate in opposite direction and therefore the free torsional vibration occurs and there is one point and it is known as node point for which the amplitude of vibration is zero so if i mark here this is the node point n1 and at this point amplitude of vibration is zero then suppose i will consider the left hand side of this n1 that is this part of the shaft and this rotor then this part of shaft will act as a spring with stiffness kt and this rotor as a mass with ma so this is the spring mass diagram for this first part now we will move to the right hand side part of this n1 now the remaining portion of the shaft will also act as a spring with stiffness kt and the mass of this rotor b as a mb now we will move to the next part that is this rotors b and c also rotate in opposite direction and free torsional vibration occurs now in between rotors there is one point that is the node point n2 for which the amplitude of vibration is zero now above of uh, this left hand side part of this n2 if i consider then here there is the shaft that is the portion of shaft which spring stiffness kt and there is the mass that is the rotor mass mb so this is the mass mb now if we observe on both sides of this mass mb there are two springs and which are in parallel so we will say that here this spring stiffness as a kt1 and this spring stiffness as a kt2 now we will move to the right hand side part of the n2 so here also the shaft with spring stiffness kt and here there is the mass of rotor c as a mc so this is the equivalent spring mass system for this equivalent three rotor system now we will understand the amplitude of vibration so when these rotors rotate in opposite direction then their amplitude of vibration is also in opposite direction now we will consider the amplitude of vibration a is in the upward side so we will draw here one horizontal line and for this rotor a amplitude of vibration is in the upward side so we will show here this amplitude as a a1 then the rotor b rotate in opposite direction so we have to show the amplitude of vibration for this b as a rotor b is in the downward direction so we will say that this amplitude of vibration as a a2 
that is in the downward direction. So we have to join this A1 end points of A1 and A2 and the point of intersection with the horizontal line will get and this is known as node point N1. Now in the same way if we observe rotor B and C these are also rotate in the opposite direction. So this A and C rotate in the same direction. So amplitude of vibration of C is also in the upward direction. So we have to show here the amplitude of vibration as a A3. Now if we join the end points of A2 and A3 here the point of intersection we get and this is known as node point N2. So in this way we will get the node point N1 and N2. Now we will measure the distance in between these points. So we know that distance in between A and B is known as L1 and distance in between B and C is known as L2. So we have to show this. Now if we measure the distance of this node point N1 from rotor A then it is known as LA. And if we measure the distance of node point N2 from C then it is known as LC. Now if we observe this then what is the relation in between L1 and LA? So if we measure the distance in between this N1 and B then from this diagram we can say that L1 minus LA. So I will write here. L1 minus LA. Now how to measure the distance in between B and N2? So from this diagram we, we can write here L2 minus LC. So within two parameters that is for the LA and LC we will get the remaining two distance. Now we will move to calculate the natural frequency. So we know that for this three rotor system the natural frequency at each rotor is same. So it is according to the free torsional vibration of three rotor system. That we can say that Fn A is equal to Fn B is which is equal to Fn C. That is the natural frequency at point A is equal to natural frequency at point B which is equal to natural frequency at point C. Now if we observe here for this A that is the rotor A only one, one part of shaft that with stiffness kt is related. So for the spring mass system how to write the formula for the natural frequency. So we have to write the formula for natural frequency for the torsional system because the rotor is rotating that is the rotational motion is taking place. So Fn A is equal to 1 by 2 pi under root of G J by I A L A. Because here only one rotor is involved and one spring with stiffness kT is involved. Now what is the stiffness kT? So the stiffness kT is known as G J by L A. So I will write here that is the shaft stiffness kT is nothing but G. Now instead of J we will write J equivalent because this is the equivalent system divided by L A because it is related to rotor A. So G is the modulus of rigidity and it is related to the shaft material. J is the polar moment of inertia and how to calculate polar moment of inertia that is pi by 32 into this diameter D raised to 4. That is J equivalent. So for this system we can calculate here. And L that is L A that is the length of the node point N1 from the rotor A. So in this way we will get this KT. So this KT divided by IA is nothing but G J I A L A. Now in the same way we will calculate natural frequency of C. Because for the C only uh, that is for the rotor C only one. Uh, part of the shaft is connected. So one spring stiffness kT is there. So in the same way 1 by 2 pi under root of G J by I C L C. Now we will move for the shaft B. Now for shaft B if we observe there are two springs which are in parallel. So first we will calculate the equivalent spring stiffness. So for parallel spring kT equivalent is equal to kT1 plus kT2. 
Now, what is KT1? So, if we observe for KT1, that is for this shaft, in for this distance LA, we have to take this L1 minus LA distance. That is uh, distance in between this rotor B and N1. And for this KT2, that is for right hand side shaft, instead of this, this we have to take the distance between N2 and B. So, we have to take the distance L2 minus LC. So, we will write the formula. So, which is equal to, now KT1 means G, Z equivalent divided by L1 minus LA plus KT2 is G Z equivalent divided by L2 minus LC. Now we will simplify this. So GZ is common term we will take outside the bracket and inside the bracket 1 divided by L1 minus LA plus 1 divided by L2 minus LC. Now how to calculate natural frequency for rotor B? So for rotor B FNB is equal to 1 by 2 pi under root of KT equivalent because we have to use equivalent torsional stiffness instead of these two springs and divided by IB. IB is the mass moment of inertia for this rotor B. So instead of KT equivalent we will put all these values. So 1 by 2 by under root of GZ by IB inside the bracket 1 divided by L1 minus LA plus 1 divided by L2 minus LC. Now we will move to the second case. Two consecutive or successive rotors rotate in the same direction and remaining rotor rotate in opposite direction and it is known as one node frequency. Now we will consider here the first two rotors that is rotors A and B rotate in same direction. So I will write here these are rotors A, B and C. So first two rotors rotate in the same direction and third rotor rotate in opposite direction. Now we will draw the node diagram. Now when the A and B rotate in same direction, so we have to draw the amplitude of vibration in the same direction that is in the upward direction. So we will first draw one horizontal line and in upward direction I will show amplitude of vibration for A is A1. And in the same direction, amplitude of vibration for B is A2. So here is rotor A, here is rotor B and here is rotor C. Now we have to show the amplitude of vibration of C in the opposite direction that is in the downward direction and it is known as A3. Now how to find out the node point? So if we observe, we have to first join these A1 endpoints of A1 and A2. Now, if we join A1 and A2 and the third node point, that is the distance from this node point from A, how to measure? For that, we have to extend this line. That is, this slope we have to extend. So if I extend this, so this is the construction line, this uh, here is the node point and the distance of this node point from A, how to measure this? So we have to measure this with LA because this node point is having distance from rotor A that is known as LA. Now if we observe in between rotor B and C, these amplitudes are opposite in direction. So we will connect the end points of A2 and A3. So here is the actual node point. So we will say N. Now for this actual node point, how to uh, measure the distance from node point C? So we will measure here the horizontal distance. That is known as LC. Now from this diagram we can say that in one node frequency we cannot get the actual value for this node point. Because there are two possibilities for this uh, amplitude A1. Because of this amplitude A1 we will get here possibility of here. But if we refer these two rotors B and C then actual node point will get here. That is this is the node N. Now we will take the rotors B and C rotate in the same direction because these two are also the successive 
on consecutive rotor so we will show here the direction of rotation and the rotor a will rotate in opposite direction so we will show here the amplitude of vibration so amplitude of vibration for b and c are in the same direction so we will show here the amplitude of vibration as a c is a3 that is in the upward direction so the amplitude of vibration of rotor b a2 is also in same direction that is in the upward direction and amplitude of vibration a is in the opposite direction that is in the downward direction so it is a1 now if we connect this a1 and a3 and that is the end points of the amplitude and now we will extend this slope so if we extend this slope we will get the point of intersection here so this is supposed to be node point but what is the distance so i will write here there is a node rotor a rotor b and rotor c so this is the node point so for this node point distance from rotor c is known as lc but if we connect the end point of a1 and a2 which are in opposite direction then we will get the node point here this is the known as actual node point so what is the distance of this actual node point for, from the rotor a that is known as la